It's a stunning day, nice and frosty here in Candlelow today. What we're going to be working on is finishing off the frame down there with the caravan and I'll be cleaning that up while I get Steve to go around and check that we've got all the bits and pieces we need for our windows and doors. Here we are. Steve has just arrived. It's very exciting. I did a top job of cleaning the workshop for him today. So oh, it's beautiful, Sambo. It's like like a kitchen, mate. We could eat in there. <laughs> I think we probably will. Yeah, probably. All right. What are we doing today, Steve? Come and have a look at this, mate. I bought you a few presents. Oh, a few presents. I've got a few ideas for gifts for you too, my friend. I've been watching your, uh, your channel. Yeah. And your garden bed stuff. Yeah. And I, I just kept down another caravan this week. Yeah. And look what was on the bottom of it. Oh. A tank with a, a tank. hole in it. <laughs> eh? And pipes coming out of it. Oh. You know what it reminds me of, don't you? Yeah. Know? It stinks of wicking bed to me. It does. The problem with this one is probably a little bit too thin. But do you know what I reckon this will make? A great? And I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this. I've got an idea from it already. Good. So I'm going to take the top off it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn this into a solar hot water system. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Using old poly pipe. And, you know, I know where there's a bit of old poly pipe lying about. Of course. Under down by the, the creek. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, we'll basically make a, yeah, we'll make a little solar hot water system. See That's how that goes. Good. The other present, mate. This. Yeah. Look at that. What does that remind you of? <laughs> Beautiful chunks of old hardwood. No Beautiful nails old. either. Nail free hardwood that oh. came out of a car apart caravan, and I thought, oh, I know the bloke that's got some more of those that could probably use that. Absolutely. On the bench now, ladies and gents, and we're looking at um, all the various different bits, small things that have come out of the car park, and uh, just get all the smalls together so that I know what I've got. And when I come to actually putting the thing back together, I've got everything in place. There'd be nothing worse than going. Everything's perfect except I'm missing that hinge. So I thought Steve's had a heap of experience in piecing these things together and he'll be able to know exactly what I need or what I have to make in order to finish the project. I can spy a problem straight away, Sambo. Yeah. See these beautiful old hinges? Yeah. I sent four of those to Brendan up at Gold Coast Vintage Retro Caravans. Brendan's an awesome restorer and he does beautiful work. He was after four of those for his personal van. Rare as rockin' horse poop to find, and I just gave four of them away to Brendo up there. Well, you're a generous chap, aren't you? I, know, mate. I, I reckon that um, with a little bit of engineering and ingenuity, I think I'll be able to come up with something that's as good. Yeah. I do have others that we can uh, we can repurpose and reuse if that's the thing. And, uh, look at that! Look at that! You've got heaps. <laughs> what are you complaining about? I haven't got eights, but I've got a few there. Yeah. These yeah. Are hard, they're a hard find, the old butterfly hinge. Yeah. We've probably got a couple of those. Did you salvage any of those off the uh, the chicken swap van? I think so. Yeah. I reckon that this is all the chicken swap van, actually. Oh, yeah. So um, I know that my van has got a few on it, but uh, it's got a... Oh, there you go. You've got a good set there. Yeah. We've got half a set oh. there. <laughs> No, they're dead because there's lots and there, of And there's a bits. there's a few other windows. But that's, a, that's a usable half up there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, a couple of rusty old hinges. Maybe what I'll do, Steve, is I'll just draw up for you what I think the van is going to look like. That's a good idea. So the general layout. What I noticed when I've been doing a little bit of research on these twelve nines, and interestingly, my door is actually. Uh, we should get that curve a bit better is closer to the front of the van than many of the others that I've looked at. They started making them in 1954, but they didn't really hit the road until 1955. The 55 and 56 were a unique van in so much as they had that narrow front window that you've got yeah. and a solid door, this door that we're riding on at the moment, didn't have an inset fly screen. In 1957, they put a fly screen oh, into inside the, the door. door. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you tell the difference. Oh, okay. And in 1957, they also went to a full width front window. Yep. Right. So the difference is there: uh, the front window, the door, but also the roof hatch. If you have a look at that roof hatch, yeah, it's a square roof hatch. Yep. They went a bit uh, more. Um, 
rectangular. Rectangular. Yeah. In 57 as well. So those three differences is how you pick the difference. Okay. But anyway, let's get onto those windows and doors. So we've got the door there, which I'm thinking we'll put your nice little porthole window in. We've got our big front window that we need to make sure we can be framed up and ready to go for. We've got a window here, which I was hoping to use one of the windows out at the back of your van. But unfortunately, your window has a bit of an angle bedangle yeah, like that going on because it was right on the back panel. Yeah. So it's not going to work in there, unfortunately. And then I have my two sort of rectangular windows, which are the back here. I'm s and then obviously we've got whatever we do at the back. I think that'll be a discussion for another day. Yeah. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I've been churning over that at four o'clock in the morning the last few nights, so it'll come out. <laughs> um, so here we have... A, door, a window here that we might just have to see what we've got lying around. And then we have the roof hatch. Now one thing I am interested in the roof hatch, it was hinged this way so it would open and I actually think I do want it to open all the way up. So um, I think thinking about how it's fixed in the top of the van is good. And the reason I want to open it all the way up is this van is going to be a performance van, a feature van and to be able to get through the roof um, with maybe a projector or something like that if I'm, you know, it would be a really handy thing uh, just to be able to open that up if I need to. So we'll have a look at that too. Crazy as a werewolf you are. Oh, right? Absolutely wild. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the windows and the doors and the layout. So we're going to see what we've got there and hopefully we can pull that together in the next few months. Yep. What have you got there, Sambo? Well, a box of goodness, by yeah, the look of it. Like, that's, this stuff gets me excited. Whenever I um, go to a clearing sale, I always buy that job lot of stuff. You know, I'm that guy that buys job lot of this sort of thing for a couple of bucks. So you can see that we've got some pretty hinges there. Yeah, they're crackers. Yeah. Rare as rockin' horse poop. Yeah, and um, looks like we got an old uh, caravan roof latch. Roof latch. We wanted to boost things up a bit. That's pretty funky I've, as well. I've got, uh, I've got a big box of those. I reckon I've got about 20 of those hinges. I've got a bit of a dream, folks, that this whole van will be finished by Christmas. And uh, it's a mission. I, I'm thinking now that I've just got into spending another day just doing the rust preparation stage, I'm thinking that they're going to be pushing it for Christmas. But I've got this little Merry Christmas box here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw any receipts that I get into this. And the receipts will just, at the end of the day, I'll be able to tally it up because, you know, you don't think about the little bits that you spend until you get to the end of it. I know that my Datsun project cost me 10 grand in the end and I thought, oh, it might have cost me a couple. So there's $63 in rust prevention. And I was stoked because I put this shirt on this morning and I must have been wearing the same fine shirt when I went to the clearing sale a few months back because in here... We got a Land Rover back. Oh, that would have been good for you. Sixty bucks. Rusty pickets. In here, I have the particular receipt for a caravan. A price of two hundred dollars. And in it goes. It's a uh, scabler, I call it. We're using a scabler tool here to get the last of the rust off. The scaler. The scabler. Scabler. Oh, the, the, it's pretty loud. Super loud. It's absolutely super loud. And Ear I'm doing some work on our uh, front end here. So the drawbar, going to sort of take everything off it. But we're really stoked because we've come across, I don't know if you can make that out there, the <laughs> original uh, chassis numbers there. So that's good. It means that we're all hunky dory and ready for Rego. We're ready for Rego, aren't we? Just yeah. about there, mate. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll drag it in there, the Savo. See what, what he works. reckons. <laughs> And uh, Steve's just done an absolute cracker job of basically knocking back any of the rust and corrosion that was on the chassis. And uh, we're into painting it now, so I better get in and give him a hand. A bit of rust converter rather than paint, so it just converts the, uh, the rust into a stable corrosion product which won't further corrode. So it's kind of like a, an inhibitor. Rust inhibitor. Rust inhibitor. And then after this we will... Probably flip the van back on its wheels and I'll start knocking into the rest of it this week. Uh, we're at, so far this has been the second day with Steve on the project. 
And uh, it was basically all grinding, I've got to be honest. We didn't really do much else but grind. Very you? exciting day though. Mate. Exciting day. Nothing better than grinding. Nothing better than grinding. My middle name is Rusty Grinder. Yes. And you can see also that we've completely cleaned up the drawbar, taken everything off it, including the safety chain, which was um, fairly well safe. corroded. <laughs> the and, safety uh, chain. We'll uh, be finishing off with this, flip it back up on its wheels, and uh, we'll keep going with the next stage of the process next week. All right, mate, I might have lost too many pounds this week. So you got to get the hell out of the way when it starts to go. Yep. Get going. Five, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Ready to go again. Had a fantastic day here in Candelay today, and it's great to see the old van back on its feet. Um, we're going to continue with the rust preparation this week, so you might miss out on a week of video. I just don't know how much rust preparation work you need to really see on YouTube. I'd like to thank Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia for joining us again. Good on you, Steve, eh? You're welcome, buddy. And I'll tell you what, I've been thinking about that little vintage camping kit that you got going on. There's a couple of things in the old... Oh, look out! Look at that! In the old mountain cupboard. Mate, that is exactly what I'm after. Yeah. Look at that, eh? I might have a few more if you want bigger ones, but I figured you want the small and light, easy Little, to cut. Enough for me and Mrs. Yeah, BRA, yeah. Jonesy, she'll love that. Yeah. Look at that, mate. Enough for my uh, eggs in the morning. Yeah. Look, it's good kit, and but it, it just wouldn't happen without you, Steve, so I really appreciate no, you being here. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. And we'll see all you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.